think it's been an amazing few days um, that have brought together um, the agriculture, nutrition and health research communities. I think we've talked a lot about the value of this, um, this event as being interdisciplinary. So before I share a few comments, I'd just like to see what it looks like in the room. So it's going to require you to get up a little bit. So first of all, I'd like you to stand up if you're a nutritionist or a nutrition scientist. Anyone from the nutrition area? Quite a lot, quite a lot. What about people from health? So stay standing, don't sit down. Let's have the health people stand up as well. Okay, that's a, a good proportion. Okay, great, thank you. Let's have a look at um, how many people we have from agricultural science. Sit, sit down, the health and nutrition people. Let's see the agricultural scientists. Brilliant. Uh, any food technologists? Yes. One, two, three. Yes, we have got some. We were talking last night and we thought uh, we might not have any in the audience. So that's fantastic. What about, uh, so you guys sit down. And what about economists? I think we've got quite a few. Yeah, excellent. Brilliant. Uh, what about anthropologists and social scientists, sociologists? Yeah, fantastic. Okay, I know there's at least one other geographer. I'm a geographer. Any, uh, there's at least one other geographer. Somewhere, they, maybe they've gone. Okay, it's you. No, there was somebody else. <laughs> okay, so I, uh, there must be people I've missed. I was at a meeting on plant health last week, and we had an astronomer in the audience. So can anyone beat that? Have we got any other disciplines that I've missed? Huh? Data. Yeah, data. Fantastic. Brilliant, yeah. Anyone from, from other areas? Data, climate change? ICTs. Okay, my last question, because you're not—if you're a different discipline, you're not standing up. So, uh, um, anyone from the private sector? Anyone from business who hasn't? No, private sector linkages. There's one somewhere. Sunita says there's somebody who's shy and hiding because they're the only one. Fantastic. So I think um, the first point I want to make is about interdisciplinarity and I think this academy has become quite unique in the way that it has taken that interdisciplinary approach, um, bringing together so many disciplines to address real world issues. And I think in some ways the academy is, has become a bit of a forerunner in this area uh, for development and it's maybe a model that other big development challenges in, in, other, in other sectors in development uh, can think about as a way of bringing together um, research collaborations for learning and for networking in what I think has become a genuinely global community practice. Um, my second point is about the size and quality of the event. Unfortunately, I missed the Academy last year, uh, but I was in some of those earlier events in London. Um, and it's fantastic to see how much it's grown over the last few years. Um, and I think today, uh, I think the figures are we got about 360 participants. We had 250 attending the learning labs. And there were 50 people involved in setting those learning labs up and sharing their experience and expertise. So a big thank you to everyone who was involved in that. We've had 64 posters, 41 presentations. We've got 180 organizations represented here. Um, so the statistics are significant. And I think we've seen a huge increase in the quality of the research being presented over the last few years. Um, and there have been some really amazing presentations from all of you here today. Um, I'm sure you've all got your own personal favorites. Um, I, I, for me, the gender inequity session this morning was uh, fantastic. Um, so my third point's about diversity. Um, yesterday we had a, a very nice presentation about how we've moved from production diversity and diet diversity to needing to include livelihood diversity. And then we had gut mi microbiota diversity. So I want to add another dimension uh, of diversity, which I think the academy and the organizers have really put a lot of um, emphasis on. And that's really thinking about kind of research cult researcher diversity, different disciplines, different geographies, um, and opportunities for early career fellows and early career researchers. And I think we should celebrate that diversity. Um, and uh, I think particularly on that last point, it was fantastic to hear John Kafour say um, that young researchers have the power to position research to shape future diets. That was an amazing statement. My fourth comment is about the scope of the event, which I think again has expanded considerably as the event has matured. 
And we've seen some quite significant shifts, I think, in the emergence of really important new areas. Um, there's been a shift from an emphasis on food production, uh, moving to much more thinking about food systems and policies. And we're just at the beginning of that shift. It's a really big priority, um, as Patrick has just said. But I think we're starting to see it in the content of, of some of the discussions in the last few days. Um, there's been a lot more on animal source foods. Uh, I think there's been a lot that we haven't seen the same increase that uh, uh, on fruit and vegetables that we have seen on the animal source foods. So I think that's something for us to take away and think about. Uh, food prices and affordability of diets has really come up the radar screen. Um, metrics and methods. Uh, there's been a really strong focus this year on gender and women's empowerment, uh, and of course the climate and environment work. So we need to continue to deepen work in all of those areas. Um, but I'll just highlight three areas where I think we maybe could think about doing a little bit more. Um, so the first is on the kind of the dynamics of food systems and nutrition systems, and particularly those kind of rural urban transitions which are happening in many places quite rapidly and which are driving changes both in ag and nutrition outcomes, but also in jobs. And I think jobs and um, the future of youth is becoming a really big issue. Um, the second one's around kind of agricultural commercialization and value chains. And I was a bit surprised we didn't see more on that. Uh, and, and maybe a little bit surprised that we're not seeing more, more research into how we engage with the private sector and how do we work with businesses. Um, certainly for DFID, that's a really big priority at the moment. Um, and it's, it's both about how, how, we, how we understand the role of private sector and business, businesses and, and whether that's on pre breeding platforms or low-cost diagnostics or how we work and engage in value chains. Um, but it's, it's maybe something that we can also explore in terms of hearing voices from the private sector on what they think is their role in shaping future diets, because I think that's going to be an increasingly important area. So that's my question about whether we had any private sector in the room. Uh, maybe next year we can think about that. So I think what we've seen in the last couple of years is um, a shift from an area where there was a real dearth of evidence to one where we're seeing the emergence and the establishment of a new area of research and a, a significant area of research. And that's a huge achievement and you are all part of that process. And as this area of research evolves and matures further, we need to guard against some risks. I think one is the risk that as we get bigger as a research community that we start fragmenting into our silos again. Um, and, and we need to be mindful of that. And, and the second is that we continue to be responsive to emerging issues and emerging challenges. And that brings me on to my last point, which is about the role of policymakers in shaping research. Um, I think both the last two academies have, have had some form of policy roundtables or policy dialogue. And I think the session on women's empowerment yesterday showed that we're doing some of the right research and that policymakers across different sectors are asking for that kind of evidence and, and, and really willing to engage with us. Um, so we really need to think creatively about how we bring in the voices of policymakers um, and how we ensure that we continue to be responsive to emerging ideas. Um, and I'd encourage us to think about that for, for the next academy. Um, they, they can really help us shape uh, policy relevant research questions and un help us understand how evidence fits into their policy context how they've used research in the past, um, and what has worked from their perspective. But also it will help us identify the entry points and levers for change, uh, and what type of evidence will be most effective in that space. And it will also think, help us think about how we communicate our research. And I think that's a key challenge for all of us. It's certainly something we think about a lot in DFID. We're not just here to produce the research, but we need to think about how we communicate that best to our end users and our audience? Uh, and how do you tell the story around the, the research that you've done? So uh, finally, I'll come to a few thank yous. I think uh, the partnership model that we've had for this event, which brought together uh, USAID's Nutrition Innovation Lab and their work in Nepal, with uh, the Acam Academy supported by Imana and uh, CGIR, Agriculture for Nutrition and Health, um, has been a really successful one. I think it's added a lot of richness to the discussions and the debates, and it's helped root some of those discussions in the local context. And I think that's been hugely valuable. Um, so I think this, this event has really demonstrated the success of that model, and I hope that we'll be able to seek out similar partners 
um, partnerships in, in future years. Uh, so finally, um, a, a big congratulation to the organizers of the event. Uh, it's been a huge piece of work from everybody involved. I know we've had a vote of thanks already, uh, but just, just to say a very big thank you to um, USAID, particularly to Patrick and Sweater and the team of people who are working with you. Um, so big, big, big round of applause for them, first of all. Uh, and then to Sunita and to uh, the renamed Tool Joe Yates, uh, who've done an amazing job as well uh, on the logistics side and the organization um, and helped make the event a big success. So a round of applause for them as well. Um, and, and finally, a big thank you to everybody else who has been involved in some way uh, in presenting, in discussing, uh, in, in all sorts of ways that we may not have seen. Uh, and to you all as participants uh, for your incredible engagement and your commitment to, to be here throughout. Uh, and look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you.